I'm James Caldwell. Welcome to the Classical Guitar Practice Room. Today we're looking at a piece of music called Etude Mécanique No. 1 by Stanley Yates. And it's what I call a technique builder. I refer to any short study or musical composition that has some underlying technical aspect to it as a technique builder. And I like to put these in my daily warm-up routine just to drill on them and to develop various aspects of my playing. I would encourage you to do the same. This piece here has two technical aspects that I see. Uh, let's take a look at the music and find out what they are. First of all, it's in 10-8 time, which is an unusual time signature, but don't let that bother you. Just look at it as a series of eighth notes. He happens to put 10 in each measure. So if we look at the first measure, you can see that there's uh, two groups of three eighth notes, followed by two groups of two eighth notes. And this is where the first technical challenge comes in. The group of three is a straight arpeggio, P-I-M, and he does it twice. The last two groups of two are is the thumb, and then I-M together. And for the very last group, it's open strings. Now we're going to repeat that. And at the beginning of the measure, there's a little 4X above it. And that means we're going to play that measure four times, not just twice. So... It goes like this. So the challenge there is separating the fingers for the first six notes and then keeping I am together for the last four notes. And he maintains that pattern throughout the piece until you get to the last line where it does something different to end it. The second measure is very much like the first measure. However, in the second group of three notes, you'll notice that the middle note is a D, and we have to place the pinky down for that one beat. Other than that, it's the same as the first measure, so uh, we're, and it also repeats and is played four times. So the challenge there is just controlling the pinky to place it as needed and to hold it long enough to let that note ring. I, I want to draw attention to that. We don't want to cut it short. We don't want to do... We don't want to lift it immediately after playing. We want to hold it as long as possible to let it ring, to appear to ring as long as all the other notes are ringing. So I, when I play that, I hold this finger down until I play the A two beats later in the bass, and then I lift it right before the C. So I play that A, the pinky's still down. I lift it for the C. You might want to practice that measure very slowly. And make sure you're holding that note as long as possible. Moving on to measure three, it's a lot like measure two. However, in the second group of three, we are now going to play a G uh, with the fourth finger again. And measure three is also played four times. Uh, practice it slowly. Hold that G as long as possible. It comes at the end of that second group of three, so it's a little bit shorter than the D was in the previous measure. But you can hold it till you play that A in the bass the next beat and then lift it for the opening. Measure four is just a single measure by itself. It's not repeated. It's a transition. It's going to walk us down to having an E in the bass instead of having A in the bass. So it hits that D string right at the end. Now we get to measures five and six. Five and six are two measures that go together and they're repeated. So we play those two measures twice. And we now have the second finger on the fourth string E. Very much like the first measure, but with a lower bass note. However, in measure six, we start off with E in the bass. We end up with a one beat of F in the bass. So measures five and six together, played twice. Sound like this.
Moving on to measure seven and eight, it's very similar to five and six, two measures that go together. They are played twice. It's uh, exactly the same as five and six, except now we're gonna have the little finger on D on the second string all the way through it. With the E's and D and then E's with the F. So when you play those two measures, the little finger stays on D the entire time. And the second and third fingers are dancing around on the fourth string. So you can kind of think as the little finger as being your anchor for this. Right there, it's the little finger is the only one down. Measures uh, 9 and 10 are two measures that aren't repeated and it's a transition to kind of take us back to the beginning theme here. And it's a lot like 5 and 6. So it's E in the bass without the D anymore on the second string. However, at the very end, the last two groups of two throws the D in. So just right at the end, you have to place your little finger on that D. And that walks us up back to the A. Measures 11 and 12. They are two measures that go together and are repeated. And we're kind of back to the beginning theme here, but slightly different. Measure 11, measure 12. They throw that D in right at the end. And that's kind of a little bit tricky. Measure 11, measure 12. We do that twice. Now we're coming to the end, and in measure 13, the time signature changes to 12-8. Simply all he's done is he has four groups of three notes, so it's just little arpeggios. And in 14, it's all half notes, so... Catching that D at the end. And these two notes here, the last two notes in 14, are tied over to... 15. So in 15, you simply play the E on the fourth string while the D and E above it are still ringing. So measures 13, 14, and 15, the end. Again, watch out for where you have to place the little finger on D. In uh, 13, it's the third group of three and fourth group of three. Then in 14, it comes off. And at the very end, it goes back down. Then we play the E. So that's Etude Mechanique by Stanley Yates. Uh, it's an excellent study. I give it to my students to practice. One problem that people have with this is the timing. It's all eighth notes, so it's very even timing. It's mechanical, that, hence the title. However, when I've given this to students, some of them kind of see the groups of three as triplets, or at least they see three notes together, so they want to play them faster. And when they have two notes, they slow down, so they're playing it like this. And that's not how it goes. It's very even. That may be a bit tricky at first. Stanley Yates has a little note at the bottom. Uh, apparently this is a common problem that people have. It says, don't be deterred by the time signature. Simply count in groups of threes and twos as needed. One, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, one, two. So when you do that, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, one, two, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, one, two. One, two. That should help you straighten it out. It's just very even. This piece can be found in uh, Stanley Yates' Graded Repertoire for Guitar, book one comes with a CD. It's an excellent collection of music. A lot of it is familiar pieces you may have heard before, but there's a there's quite a few in here from modern composers and even Stanley Yates himself. So there are some unique pieces in this collection. Uh, I highly recommend it and uh, I often refer to this with my students. If you'd like to buy a copy, there's a link below in the description which will take you to Amazon where you can purchase a copy. I hope you do. So that's the first technique builder that I have for you. And I'm going to come up with some more to present to you in the near future. I hope that you'll practice these to help develop your technique. 
Until next time, I've been James Caldwell. Thanks for joining me in the Classical Guitar Practice Room. Thank you.